Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my video about the distance from Kenya to South Africa, which turns out to be 4,860 kilometers. <laughs> but before we start, 499 graphic novel, Rock and Roll Ninja graphic novel. Oh, two days left on the initial funding for Rock and Roll Ninja graphic novel, which is now the full story as a uh, graphic novel, bound, you know, square bound. So, um, comics, <laughs> comics still exist. Technically, uh, perhaps unfortunately, uh, and uh, so um, not that anyone really cares, uh, but something very, I was going to say interesting, but then the word sad, like just jumped out in front. It's like sad, something sad uh, is happening is that um, uh, basically progressives are moving us backward uh, decades, centuries uh, backwards. Segregation is now common in the comic book industry. Segregation, of course, relies on racism being rampant, but it's the woke uh, variety. So we have here Marvel Voices. Marvel Voices is a book where the woke uh, people who run Marvel treat random minorities like they're UNICEF kids. It is a charity book. I guess at best you can say it's a resume builder, so when these people go to Netflix to pitch whatever, they can say, I'm a Marvel writer. Um, it's just weird. It's like a portfolio piece. Jubilee's like barely in this book, but she has the whatever. Celebrating Black History Month with a star-studded lineup. Okay, it, it was just, these are just random shitty, the weird, okay. SJWs are racist. Like they're, they're like actual racist. If you're black, uh, I have bad news for you. They don't see you as a person, um, and they uh, they hold no expectations of you. You are something to use to make themselves look good to their peers. I hired one of those blacks. They try so hard. So we got the... Uh, it's only 35 pages, and there's six stories in there. None of these stories matter. None of these stories are meant to matter. In fact... This is probably going to be one of the most unopened comics in comics uh, history. This is uh, a bummer, as uh, someone described. <laughs> Sometimes you describe things like a million different ways, and, and then someone just said, this genre is bummer. It's just a bunch of stories about discrimination. So let's just jump right into it. I mean, these stories are absolutely worthless. Hey, would you like a story where the point is I have friends? That's it. <laughs> That's it. And then we got girl crew it's your girl riri and uh her friends hanging out in chicago why are you hanging out with a child <laughs> in another city does anyone else find that uh, uh weird so uh shuri uh has a uh, just a chill spot she's just got an apartment that she rents in chicago just to hang out with with friends Th that's it the story is they um paint their nails, and they, uh, yummy numerson food sees is good sees, and then they gossip and gab, and they play video games, because, oh my gosh, geek alert, and, uh, what does she say, I was like, you know, I look forward to this decompression session every six months, wish we could meet more often, but you can come here all the time, I made this place especially for us, any excuse to spend time, is I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, did you buy the whole building? Are you renting a suite? So, like, when you went to the leasing office or the property office, and they're like, oh, uh, welcome. Uh, she's a princess. Princess Shuri. Uh, are you moving to Chicago? She's like, no. Um, I want to hang out with uh, uh, two children. Just once every six months. Just, just... <laughs> what in the name of Epstein Island is going on here? Okay, so... Nobody cares. <laughs> you might say, this is a really obvious, glaring problem with this story. Uh, Shuri is, she's what she's supposed to be, what, early 20s? And she's hanging out with some high schoolers just every six months. Uh, so then we cut to this one, and this one is just like a, a complete embarrassment. You know what this is? Um, we're going shopping for a meal. And then Thor, I think I saw him in a movie, was there. That, that's literally the story. That's it. This book is not meant to be read. Uh, it's not meant to do anything but 
emotionally blackmail comic shop owners and librarians to ordering it and to give a random group of minorities a Marvel, you know, resume boost. So then, I mean, we've got some good, you know, they have a couple of actually talented uh, people. I believe this is Ken Lashley. But the story has, like, just no point. Men, am I right? Men. Okay. Nothing matters. So uh, it just kind of goes on that interminably forever. We get to go to Nigeria. And, oh, we're still in this story. Uh, we get to go to Nigeria. And um, we got the first Nigerian female Venom. I believe that was actually a headline story in one of the show media pieces. So they show Nigeria and we get a thimble deep description of the situation there. And then uh, we find out some people in the crowd have superpowers and one of them is a Venom in a wheelchair. Ah, your government shows itself. Let's show them then, Venom. That is, that was, I feel like I should get a medal for not messing that up. That's a, that's a tongue twister. So then <laughs> this very hastily designed Nigerian female Venom uh, and the crew, there's no real story. It just sorts of ends. Uh, they fight some random cops and then somebody takes a selfie and says, everyone can see now. They tried, but they failed. We are the coconut head generation. We are hard. We are the goat generation. We are stubborn and the greatest of all time. And SARS! SARS is this paramilitary group in the country. Um, this is absolute trash. There's a robbery at a bodega. And uh, Blade jumps in and is fairly ineffectual. There's uh, two kids. Their uncle has become a vampire. He brings over some of his friends for... It wasn't really clear what they were there for. They made a joke about being there for some Takis or something like that. So, um, boy, Blade is really having trouble fighting three completely generic vampires, so much so that he actually needs help from these two random kids, and they kill their uncle with garlic rice. Yeah, literally nothing matters. So then, uh, then it looks like it's <laughs> over because they have an afterword. But then we get this paid-for ad by Def Jam Records, and then there's one more story. <laughs> like, again, nothing matters. There is no guidance. There's no editing. This one is um, set in South Africa, but it's weird because she says, it is a small village near my homeland. And I'm like, I'm not exactly an expert on African geography, but I'm pretty sure... So I looked it up. Uh, the city is in South Africa. Aurora's from Kenya, although she spent a lot of time in Cairo. Um, and then I even, like, it, wait, is she calling Krakoa? So um, it's not close. <laughs> this this line of dialogue says, uh, it is a small village near my homeland. I don't, I don't know about that one. Uh, this one was co-written by Danny Lore, and Danny Lore is, there's actually Lore on Danny Lore. Danny Lore is like the understudy for Vida Ayala. Vida Ayala is essentially triple word score in diversity Scrabble. Uh, sh not, not she, they. They, one person, they, get so much work that she actually had to start handing it off to a friend of hers who has almost all the same, you know, kind of triple word, word score, multiple diversity points. And then Danny's gotten so much work uh, that she... Now Danny needs co-writers, so it's a very interesting. It's the circle of life, um, and uh, that's it. That's it. It's it's a book. Uh, it's a sad book uh, used to use minorities so Marvel can pat themselves on the back. Look, we just increased uh, you know, m the amount of minority writers we have by three thousand percent. A bunch of not ready for prime time players, mostly, uh, get to have Marvel comics on their resume. And then we get a book that no one will enjoy, that nobody cares about. Um, and while you were making this shit, you could have been making a book that comic book stores could sell. You could have been making a book that you actually would want to read. I'm talking to the you know creators of this book, specifically the, the woke editors and, and higher ups who say, um, hey, uh, 
black women. Yeah, that's fashionable now. So uh, just grab, uh, yeah, if not written, whatever. 36 pages. It's fine. So, uh, yeah, really depressing, really uh, sad, really uh, dehumanizing to uh, use people as objects and to treat adults like they are war refugee children. Ha, huh, now I get to try to <laughs> segue to like Stan Lee mode to sell my book. $4.99 graphic novel. <laughs> Rock and roll ninja graphic novel. Got two days left on that. Oh, can we get to a thousand backers? That would be very, very exciting. Um, and I'll have more new comic reviews up all this weekend. Thanks. Bye.